Let's talk about the unique characteristics of equilateral triangles and isosceles triangles with something called the base angles theorem, as well as the base angles converse and the corollary to the base angles theorem and converse. In general, if a triangle has three congruent angles, then it must also have three congruent sides. And same thing the other way around. If a triangle has three congruent sides, then it must also have three congruent angles. We can say something similar for two congruent angles and two congruent sides. We just have to be a little specific about what we call the two of them. If a triangle has two congruent angles, we call them base angles, and therefore it has two congruent sides, we call those legs. And vice versa, if a triangle has two congruent sides, which we call legs, then it has two congruent angles, and we call those base angles. These four ideas can be summed up with the base angles theorem, its converse, and its corollaries. The base angles theorem tells us that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are also congruent. So for example, here I have an isosceles triangle, triangle ISO, and it's marked that side IS is congruent to side SO. That means that the angles opposite those sides, so opposite from side SO would be angle I, and opposite from side IS would be angle O, Angle I and angle O must be congruent because side IS was congruent to side SO. The base angles converse says the same thing, but in reverse, because that's what converses do. You switch around the order of your hypothesis and your conclusion. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. So for this one, if angle I is congruent to angle O, then the sides opposite them must be congruent, so side IS must be congruent to side SO. Then we also have the corollary to the base angles theorem and the corollary to the base angles converse. Remember that a corollary is basically just an extension of a theorem. It's a more specific version of what you already know. And in this case we're saying that if a triangle has three congruent sides, in other words if a triangle is equilateral, then it must have three congruent angles. In other words it must be equiangular. So since all three sides of this triangle are marked as congruent, I can conclude that all three angles are also congruent. And the corollary to the base angles converse says the same thing, but in the opposite order. If I have all three angles marked as congruent, so it's an equiangular triangle, then all three sides must be congruent, so it must be equilateral. So let's use these ideas to determine what else must be congruent about a figure based on what we're told is congruent. For example, if I'm told that side AC and CD and DA are all congruent to each other, what else can I conclude? Well, if I'm just talking about those three sides, then I'm really just focusing on this triangle in the center of my diagram. Since it has three congruent sides, I would call it equilateral. And equilateral triangles are always equiangular. So I could say that these three angles are all congruent to each other, which would be that angle ACD is congruent to angle CDA, which is congruent to angle DAC. What if I'm told that angle B is congruent to angle E? Well, in this case, I'm actually focusing on the entire triangle and kind of ignoring the equilateral triangle in the center. If I look at the triangle as a whole, triangle ABE is an isosceles triangle. It has two congruent angles, and therefore it must have two congruent sides. Those sides are the ones that are across from the angles. Across from angle B is side AE, and across from angle E is side AB, so AB is congruent to EA. What if I told you that side BC was congruent to side AC? Well, for this problem, I'm really just focusing on this triangle on the left side of the diagram. It's an isosceles triangle as well, because it has two congruent sides. Since it has two congruent sides, it must also have two congruent angles. Specifically, angle B must be congruent to angle CAB. And what if I told you that all three of these angles were congruent? Well, again, we're just going to focus on this little triangle in the center of the diagram. It's equiangular since all three angles are congruent. Therefore, it must also be equilateral. In other words, AC is congruent to AD is congruent to CD. So it's actually the same thing as the first question from this set of problems, just in reverse. Now let's use these ideas to actually calculate some angle measures or some side lengths. In this case, we need to figure out the value of x, given that all three sides of this triangle are congruent to each other and one of the angles is marked as 7x plus 4 degrees. 
But if all three sides are congruent, doesn't that mean that all three angles are congruent? So if one of the angles is 7x plus 4, then all three angles are 7x plus 4. And given what we learned in our previous lesson, I know that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. So I can say that 7x plus 4 plus 7x plus 4 plus 7x plus 4 is equal to 180. Then I can combine like terms, subtract 12 and divide by 21, and I find out that x equals 8 degrees. It does say in the directions to explain your reasoning, it would take two theorems to explain your reasoning here, or you can also describe it in words. x must be 8 degrees because of the corollary to the base angles theorem, that's how I labeled all three angles as 7x plus 4, and because of the triangle sum theorem, that's what allowed me to add up all three of those angles and set it equal to 180. Now we're also going to learn that equilateral triangles or equiangular triangles always have angle measures of 60 degrees, which makes sense, right? If the total is going to be 180, and I know that they're all the same, then I can just divide by 3. 180 divided by 3 is 60. So you could instead say that all three of these angles are 60, and just set 7x plus 4 equal to 60. Subtract 4 and divide by 7, and you still get to the same answer of x equals 8. What about our next example? How are we going to solve for x this time? Well, I see an isosceles triangle again. I have two congruent angles, which means I must have two congruent sides. And the sides that must be congruent are the ones that are opposite the congruent angles. Opposite angle T is the 13x plus 19, and opposite from angle U is the 17x minus 5. So those are the two sides that must be congruent to each other, so I'll set them equal and solve. So I find out that x must be 6 units because of the base angles theorem converse. Since I had two congruent angles, I must have two congruent sides. We've got another isosceles triangle for our next example. Two sides are marked as congruent, so that must mean that I have two angles are congruent. Specifically, it's the base angles. Those are the ones that are across the triangle from the congruent sides. One of my base angles is labeled as 3x minus 1 degrees, but the other base angle is angle J, and it's not labeled. But since these are the base angles, I know they have to be congruent to each other. So since angle K is 3x minus 1 degrees, angle J must be 3x minus 1 degrees as well. So now that I have variable expressions for all three angle measurements in this triangle, I can use the triangle sum theorem to write this equation. 3x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1 plus 8x equals 180. Combine like terms, add 2, divide by 14, and we get an answer of x equals 13 degrees. Your reasons would be the base angles theorem, that's how I got this angle to be 3x minus 1 degrees, and the triangle sum theorem, that's what allowed me to add it all up to 180. The next one might feel impossible because no numbers were given to us, but remember that this angle right here is 90 degrees because the little square means it's a right angle, and I have that this is an isosceles triangle because those two sides are marked as congruent, which means my base angles must be congruent. The base angles are the ones that are across the triangle from the congruent sides, so since this angle is x degrees, this angle must also be x degrees. You have two ways to solve. You could say that x plus x plus 90 equals 180. That would be according to the triangle sum theorem. But there is a slightly easier way. Since this one is a right triangle, we could use the corollary to the triangle sum theorem, which says that the sum of the acute angles in a right triangle is equal to 90. So instead you could just write x plus x equals 90, which means 2x equals 90, therefore x equals 45. And that's because of the base angles theorem. That's how we got x and x degrees here and here. And the corollary to the triangle sum theorem, that's what allowed us to add the two angles together and set it equal to 90 degrees. Here we have another isosceles triangle. Two angles are going to be congruent because two sides are marked as congruent. Specifically, it's the base angles. So which angle am I going to mark as x in addition to the one that's already labeled? It's this guy right here because that's one of the angles that's across from one of the congruent sides. These two angles are the base angles. Remember that base doesn't mean that that's what it sits on. Base means that it's the one that's not congruent to the other two. So since these two sides are the ones that are congruent, this side must be the base, and the base angles, of course, are attached to the base. So how am I supposed to figure this out if I only have this angle out here? Well, remember this angle out here is called an exterior angle. 
And we learned in the previous lesson that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. And that's what the x and the x are. So I could say that x plus x equals 134. So 2x equals 134, and therefore x equals 67. Your reasons here would be because of the base angles theorem. That's how I labeled this angle as x, because this one was x and these two sides were congruent. And the exterior angles theorem, that's what allowed us to add the two non-adjacent interior angles together and set it equal to the exterior angle. And that's the basics of what you need to know about the base angles theorem, its converse, and its corollaries. In our next video, we're going to do some more challenging problems using these same properties.